My name is Helen, this is my channel, Helen Mary Jo. If you're new here, then welcome. If you're returning, thank you. And if you're a Hell's Bell, hello. So, um, I hope this isn't pretentious, but um, I kind of thought I would do a regular slot called At Home with Helen. And basically, it's kind of crafty things, baking things, um, and, um, a few people have asked me to do more of this kind of thing. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but um, I'm doing it anyway. So I thought I might as well film it. So today I am doing three things. I am making Hattie's birthday cake, which is um, going to be a hot tub. Now I'm not, I'm not like a cake decorator or anything like that, but I can I can do a good enough job that children are happy. You know what I mean? I wouldn't do a wedding cake or anything, but um, it's just a square cake decorated to look like a hot tub, basically. Well, that's the plan. So um, I'm going to do that. I'm going to make a sultana and almond cake, loaf cake, and one for my next door neighbour. And I am just going to whip this cream that we're having with strawberries later. So. I was only going to make Hattie's cake actually, but um, I've got to use the big oven. And because I'm doing that, I thought, well, I, I need to make another cake as well. And I know I'm wearing, I filmed this on the same day as the duvet video, so I don't know which order they'll come out, but um, I'm just cracking on with it anyway. So the first thing I'm going to do is to whip this double cream up, which I think in America is called heavy cream. And um, because then I can just, uh, carry on and use the mixing bowl afterwards. So this is one litre of double cream that I got from Costco. And I'm just gonna pour that in there. I mean, I know this is not exactly cooking, but um, I didn't want you to kind of see the remnants of the cream in, in the bowl and wondered what on earth I'd done. So I will stop the video once I've got this started. I'm using my Kenwood Chef today, my, my big mixer. I'll show you. The children bought this for me for Christmas, uh, not last year, the year before. I had a Kenwood Chef that I'd had all my married life and then it packed up. And so um, I really wanted another Kenwood, but they're very expensive. And so the children clubbed together and bought me one, which was absolutely lovely. So um, I'll get this going and then, um, I'll, I'll crack on from there. Switch it on is always a good idea. It is switched on. So I've I've got this cream to you know a, a fairly stiff whipped uh, place and because uh, we're just going to have it with some strawberries um henry and uh, my my son and his wife and uh my new grandson and tiago were supposed to be coming but um she's having a bit of a tough time with sleepless nights and things so they're not coming now so um i'm not doing the fancy dessert that i was going to do um so, but we'll have strawberries and cream. And if there's any cream left over, as you know, I will freeze that. Lots of people said that they hadn't heard that tip before. So um, that's always nice, isn't it? To, to find that you've uh, shared something useful. So basically I'll just pop, pop in this into a lidded bowl and uh, I, I don't need to worry about washing this because at the end of the day, cream is just fat and there'll be fat going into this for um, the cakes anyway. So I just need to change that beater and stop myself from licking it. She says off camera. You know I did. And I also dropped a lump of it on my big toe, so that'll teach me, won't it? So, got 
that in a lidded bowl and that can go in the fridge. So, right, so, so what now? Put the K-beater in. And then measure out. So I'm using, I'll check the measurements. I think this is 20 centimeters. This cake tin is so old. I bought it, I think when I was first married. So that's 45 years ago. So it's um, 19 centimeters actually. Um, so seven and a half inch square. So it's not a huge cake. But by the time I put the icing on it and the decoration and everything, it's big enough. And um, I think there's only seven children at the party. So that's the, the cake tin. I'm just going to do an all-in-one. And I need that to be quite deep because I'm going to cut it in half and put jam in the middle. So um, I think, what do I think? I think I'm going to do 16 ounces. For, for this one so get it onto ounces I've had the um, spread out of the fridge for a couple of hours so it's nice and soft so I don't have to worry too much about blending it it's just my standard measure which is you know whatever it is in fat it's the same in flour it's the same in sugar so that's a pound, um, sixty, yeah, pound of, pound of um, baking fat. Hang on, my cake line is blowing away. Pound of sugar, sixteen ounces of sugar. It's quite funny because since I bought that little round tin, my neighbour gets a cake every week now. Every time I make a cake, I make one for him. He just laughed when Rob took it round last week. I hope he enjoys it. I'm sure he does. It's nice to say someone's thinking of you, isn't it, as much as anything else. So that's the um, sugar. Because all I'm going to do with this is um, slice it through the middle and add um, jam into the middle and then butter icing on the top in blue to make the water. And then um, I've got some chocolate, dark chocolate and white chocolate fingers to put around the edge to kind of form the, the uh, what should I call it? like the, the sides of the hot tub. And then um, I got a good cake topper from Amazon uh, to put in the top. And I won't show you decorating it because that's so boring. And it probably take quite some time. So that's a pound of um, flour, self-raising flour. And then probably a teaspoon of baking powder all in all in it goes and then it'll be eight eggs these are large eggs so I could probably get away with seven eggs but um, I I want it to rise quite well so um, well I'll put in the the eight eggs and then for the um, sultana and almond cake I'm just using you know I told you I just make it up as I go along but I've never had a disaster to be fair so I must be doing something right so um, for that one I would just replace some of the flour with ground almonds and then I've got some almond essence that I'll put in just to give it a bit more of a kick uh, before I lose count. And um, and then the sultanas. And that makes a lovely combination, sultana and almond. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty
two more. I could have just used the empty um, cake uh, egg box, couldn't I, to tell me? I've got a fan oven, so I'm not going to put it on way ahead of time because there's no need with a fan oven. It, um, it heats up very quickly. So that's the eight eggs there. So I'll start this off really slowly. So it doesn't, flour doesn't cut everywhere. Just rinse my hands. I've got Royal Ascot on the TV. Um, my mum's cousin's son is actually a jockey at Royal Ascot and um, so I've placed placed a bet for her every day this week. Every race that he's been in we've uh, bet on him. We've only won, well we, it's her mummy but I'm, I'm putting the bets on for her. He's only won, I've got any money once but it kind of makes it more interesting if you've got some mummy on. I'll just do one push down the sides. See how quickly that is? I mean, honestly, I couldn't have um, gone to a shop and bought a cake quicker than that, could I really? One last. She's not here this time to uh, clean the blender up for me. I've already lined the tin. I've just done, I just did a bigger square and then I just cut down to make it, you know, I just cut in. I don't, I don't faff around really, you know, as long as I get this mixture into the middle, then I can push it over to the side to, um, Make sure that that paper stays in place. Just helps with, um, you know, getting the cake out. So what I'm gonna do now is when I take that away from there, I'm just gonna put a bit of kitchen roll in the bottom there so that if it does drop, it uh, doesn't go into the mixer. You know, I think a lot of cooking, I mean, baking cakes is a science, it's true. But I think a lot of it's just confidence as well, you know. You just have to go for it. And uh, I always find, and my mum's always said this, if you've got good ingredients, you really can't go wrong. Like I say, I wouldn't volunteer. Well, I have done adult cakes, but only kind of family, you know. Um, but if you've got decent ingredients and a reasonable finish, I mean, uh, for my mum's birthday last week, my younger sister had made a lovely sponge with um, cream and strawberries. I mean, what can go wrong? I mean, that's, that was a good guess, actually. Um, that's actually gone nicely in there. So I don't want to put the oven on just yet because, oh, I could actually. Because the other cakes are going to take less time, so. I'll do it on 170 fan. And I'll put that in the middle. I'm going to lower that down actually because um, I think the low tin will need more than that. I'll turn that over to give it a little bit more clearance. Yeah. So that's number one made. And I'm glad I put that there because it has. Um, dropped so now for the next one no need to wash that out because like i say it's um more of the same just 
get rid of these eggs, eggshells. And then in we go again. So just get my hands a little bit. So I now know that six ounces, six ounce mixture is fine for the loaf and two ounces is fine for the cake. So if I do an eight ounce mix this time, it will be just right. So I'm going to do six ounces of flour, which is self-raising flour, and two ounces of ground almonds. I will put the recipes in the um, description box, but really, you just remember it's it's kind of the same of, as of all of it, really. A little bit of um, probably a, just under a teaspoon of baking powder. I'm going to do it all it all in one again. The only difference is this time I won't put the sultanas in until. Um, just before the end, because I don't want them to get mushed up. That's the flour, the almonds. Again, eight ounces of sugar. This is just granulated sugar. Um, I don't buy castor anymore because it's too expensive. Somebody said to me, which I did know, if you put it in a um, blender, you can make your own castor sugar. But to be quite honest, unless you're making a kind of a light cake, and that would be like a fatless Victoria sponge or um, equivalent to that I don't actually think you you even need to worry I haven't certainly found any difference um, with using granulated when we were young mum only ever used granulated we didn't have much money growing up and uh, you know in fact there's a lady on Instagram and she tells you how you can make your own brown sugar demerara sugar icing sugar the whole lot so that's the dry ingredients and the baking fat, and now it's just three eggs. I'm gonna risk going straight in with these eggs because um, they, they, I only bought them yesterday, so I think I'm safe to assume there'll be nothing wrong with them. Still an egg problem in this country, as in avian flu, I think, um, you know, restricted to eggs. Just start that off slow, get it going and then um, rack it up towards the end. So at this stage, I'm just gonna put a good capful of this almond essence in, just to I'll give a bit more, a bit of a splodge of the essence. I love almonds. If you're not keen, just leave them out. The actual, um, hang on a minute. I've gone wrong, haven't I? I need another, I did six of the fat and six of the, um, sugar didn't I? I'm, I'm doing eight so I'm making one for my next door neighbour so there you are you see but it's all fine because uh, it's all fine I mean it doesn't make any difference really I'll just add that extra two ounces in there you're probably all shouting at the camera when I've uh, I, th I just looked there and I thought that doesn't look a lot. And then um, another two ounces of baking fat. That's three. My hands are totally clean. ounces I did six ounces of flour two ounces of ground ground almonds so that's eight so obviously everything I can as well right 
right so that's mixed mixed nicely I know you can't see that very well can you oh, I should have moved that but you know you can see what I'm doing. It's, it's not rocket science and then I will put in the um, sultanas that's dirty so I don't then I'll stick so if I if I was just doing this myself I wouldn't weigh them I would just guess them but for your benefit I'll weigh them so I'm going to put in two and a half ounces of sultanas and just one quick zhuzh of the mixer And that's that. So, it's so easy. Um, I just encourage you to make cakes. I mean, I, I always have that cake stand there on the hob. And so I do try and always have a cake there. It's nice if someone comes around for a cup of tea. Rob usually has one, a slice with his, um, hot drink of an evening he's very well by the way thank you for all the lovely comments he's doing fine and um we're just waiting for the follow-up appointment at the hospital so i'll put a little bit into my neighbors oh look at that that dropped on there just because i didn't I'm rushing this because the children are coming in after school and I want this all cleared up otherwise they'll be asking to help and lick and all that jazz and I just want to get on with it. So that's fine, that's all done. Um, the big cake will probably take at least 45 minutes and um, these obviously a bit less probably about 25 minutes but um i will just look and see i usually tell by smell you know look at the state of me i'm no expert i never claim to be so i'll pop those in now and i'll put my first timer on for um 25 minutes and I'll check from there and I'll try and put the proper timings in the um, description box down below so I know it's been a bit of a shambles but you know I'm just trying to encourage you to bake really it's so so easy and um, the next part of this at home with Helen will be some Cricut crafting which is the um, vinyl cutting machine that I've got so uh, that'll be in part two. Hi, so this is the second part of the first one of the um, At Home with Helen kind of, what should we call it? Um, just a little sort of subject matter that I thought would make a change from trying on the clothes hauls and stuff so the first part was the cakes and then the second part I'm doing today is using my Cricut machine which um, is spelled C-R-I-C-U-T and they're a vinyl cutting machine you see them all over uh, Instagram and places now and uh, I was fascinated because I had actually bought quite a few um, labels prior to that that I'd used on Kind of um, storage and things like that and then when they came into the kind of common marketplace I suppose I bought well I've actually got two machines now because I bought the small one 
to see how I'd get on with it and I really liked it so I've got the big machine as well so um, I'm doing two little projects today one is a birthday gift so I've got a friend who's um, coming up to 70 and she's invited us to her house for a barbecue so you know when you get to a certain age you really I, I she's not like a really close friend so it's not like I'm going to get her something really personal um, and I don't think really you want a lot more stuff, do you? So I did this for another friend who hit 70 and it went down quite well. So basically I've got a board, a wooden board that I bought in um, Home Bargains and I am going to decorate it with vinyl and obviously you cut on the other side. So um you can kind of have it in your kitchen if you like with, with the message on or, you know, you can just put it away. But what I do is, uh, what I'm going to do with it anyway, is um, put some nice cheese with it. She's gluten free, so I put some nice cheese with it, a little pot of chutney and some crackers. And that way everything is usable. So it's kind of a personalised gift, but it's very practical. So... Um, that's what I'm doing. And then I am labeling up the, uh, you know, the clear boxes that I bought for storing my makeup upstairs. And that's really working. So happy days. It doesn't really need labeling because I know what they are, but I like a label. So um, I'll reset the camera so that um, you can see what I'm doing and we'll take it from there. So you can see, this is the um, sticker that I made for my friend. And I think I can customise it. So um, I am going to change that name from Phil to Wendy. And then what I need to do is curve it. So, do you know, I'll tell you the truth. It's been a while since I've done this. And so I probably should have practiced beforehand, but right. So this is the portion that I need to curve. So normally I would just go up here and curve it. I'm gonna move it out of the way and see if I can curve it. Maybe I need to highlight it. No, I'm gonna stop and find out what I need to do. Right, so the, the measurements are fine. And so what you have to do is um, you use one of these cutting mats and they're kind of tacky. And I'm just going to use this kind of a terracotta color vinyl because I think that'll look quite nice on the board and then you just stick it onto the mat it's, it's tacky this mat and then um i'll line you up with with the uh, machine it's not as easy as it looks so you can see on here i've got the i oh, can't see can you i've got the um projects on there and then you just have to click on make it at the top it's all one colour. The colour that I've chosen isn't what I'm using, but it doesn't matter. So you just press continue. So basically what I have to do is choose the vinyl and then load it and that goes into the machine. And then Press the C and it should start cutting. It took a while for, it's a new laptop, so I think it took a while to recognize the machine. It's take, it's quite a big cut, so it is taking a little while to um, get started. But you can see now. It's cutting away nicely. I find it completely fascinating. 
So it won't take long once it's, it's really going. just uh, talk to you while I'm waiting for that. So this morning I was up at six and I decorated Hattie's um, hot tub cake. So I've just got to put the kind of last bits on it because otherwise it wouldn't fit in the fridge. So I'm going to do that after I've done this and, uh, and then we'll pop round. It's a really hot day as you can see. So, um, because it's buttercream, I don't want it to be in the heat for too long. So I said to Katie, I'll bring it round kind of when it's needed rather than um, having it sitting there because I expect their fridge is full because of everything they'll need for the children. So um, she's so excited, honestly. She's such a such a little organiser, you know. She, um, she said, oh, I need you to move the garden furniture to make more space for the dance floor. <laughs> So she's having, um, I think there's seven little kids coming, uh, mixed two boys and girls, and um, <coughs> they're, they're getting in the hot tub and then they're having pizzas, and she's done a playlist, and um, it's lovely really, isn't it, to get so excited, um, and uh, yeah, so she's looking forward to that. The cake's come out quite well, actually. Like I said before, I'm not... Um, I'm not a cake decorator, but I can get away with children's birthday cakes. And I couldn't do more than that anyway, to be honest, because uh, it kills me. People spend so many hours doing cakes and then, um, you know, you stick a knife in it, don't you? So um, I still got a cough, as you can hear. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's nearly finished cutting now. I'll take you back to that roving reporter so nearly there and then what you have to do is peel away the um, excess vinyl and then you that's called weeding and then you put it onto a carrier and then you put it onto the board it's done now so it's just sending that out and then it releases it so I need two hands to sort this out so I'll get you to the next stage so I thought I had the camera running, I didn't, so I apologise for that. But um, I had to pick off the back vinyl with this little tool here, and that's called weeding. So you just basically hook off the excess plastic and you're left with this. So um, what I have to do now is put it onto the carrier, as they call it. So this is just like that stuff that you use um, on, you know, to cover exercise books when we were kids. So I'll just trim that down. Don't need it too big. Now, this is really counterintuitive because all you have to do with this is you take off the backing paper and... Uh, You have to make it unsticky so you just kind of stick it to your clothes well you'd think you'd want it more sticky wouldn't you but no oh look i've just realized i didn't take the o out there that was lucky that's so easily done i expect some of you were shouting at the camera uh to warn me i'll just check yeah so yeah, so you make this like unsticky and then you have to push it onto the um, image, the vinyl. Oh, I should have chosen a smaller one to show you. I haven't made my life easy here, have I? But never mind. It's the truth and it's fine. So... You basically use this scraper to lift this off and with a bit of luck that vinyl is going to adhere to the um, 
the carrier as they call it, so the sticky back plastic. Yes, yeah, so that's coming off quite nicely. I'm going to go that way for that side and this way for this side just because so that isn't stuck and I didn't want to get I didn't want to get too um too far in before I found out. Right. So that's ready to peel off. So now I get my board and look at where I want it. So I think I'll just put it quite central to that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to measure this board. So it's 22 centimeters. So 11 is the middle. I'm just gonna put a little dent in there in the board so that I know that that's the middle as in width ways, so that when I pop this on, because once it starts to stick, you don't have an awful lot of manoeuvre to see. So that little mark is there. So if I get that seven and zero, Now this is where I'm hoping that this wood doesn't have um, any kind of coating on it because if it does, I may struggle with um, getting this to stick. Yeah, I think what you can do if, if that is a problem is give it a couple of coats of um, PVA and that will give it a nice surface to adhere to. I'm really hoping this will this will work but I think I might have to read my own words here. That's that stuff. So let's see. Give it a real good press down. Stuff. Oh, that, that Y is coming up. See, the little delicate things like the little tail of the Y can be quite precarious. Sometimes I use my finger because sometimes the warmth of your finger is enough to make it stick. So you do have to be very gentle. See, that, that Y there, that's done the same thing. And those P's will probably do the same thing. Yeah. So I'm going to come back here and see how I get on with the, the bigger, chunkier stuff is usually easier. And what I may well do, because this, this dries after a couple of days, this is actually permanent vinyl, but I might still go over it with um, some varnish if I think it's, um, cause obviously it's only wiped clean, you know, it's just, it's just a little gift really, you know what I mean? It's not, um, it's not a work of art. But you can see, you can see the challenges um, but I really, I, I kind of quite enjoy it, um, even with the challenges. So I, I think I'll stop the camera there because I, I think you're probably bored with it. You get the idea. And hopefully I'll be able to um, just show you the finished article. So it was a bit of a nightmare. But I got there in the end and um, I'll see how that sticks over the next couple of days. And if, if I think it needs it, I will give it a coat of PVA. But uh, 
I think it looks quite nice, don't you? So, um, yeah. So as I say, I'll just add some cheese to that, wrap it in cellophane, cheese, chutney, and some gluten-free crackers. And that's, I think, a jolly nice 70th birthday gift. So I'll quickly do the other things, which will be so much easier. Just hold on while I set that up. So what I've got here are the containers that I told you I was uh, I got in home, but no, I got in B and M, uh, and that I use. I've got this one is face. You know, when you group it all together, you realise how much stuff you've got. This is eyes, and this is lips. So it works quite well because when I'm using them, I just unstack them, and you can see on here, I've got eyes, lips, face. And then the vinyl I'm using is this very girly, um, sparkly pink. So I've got it all set up in the machine. Just going to pop that into there. And that should tell me to start in a second. Just got to wait for it to connect. And then it's vinyl. And then that should be go so this really will be quick so i'll just show you on the lipstick one because that's got the least products in it so i'll put it on this side because it's clear but i've still got some sticky residue from the label rob took that for me so, all my lip pencils, it's not all of them to be fair, but it's the ones I'm currently using. Sylvie's number seven. All virtually identical. Well, I think that one's different and the other three are identical. But it's kind of just, it goes with every lipstick. So I tend to put that round the edge of my lips and just fill it in a little bit. And then I'll use something like the Max Factor or what's this one? PS, got no idea. Oh, that's Primark, I think. So just depending on how I fancy it. So that's, that's cut now. Then it will eject it. And then I'm not going to worry about saving this bottom part of vinyl because it's, um, it's got all wrinkly, which won't work very well. So, God, it's so hard to see. Um, if I cut it down, so, because they're not huge words. And, uh, and then I'll start weeding it. So... I know I missed this bit off the last one. So you just take off, weeding is just take, when I first started doing it, it said you just have to weed it. I was like, what the hell is that? But it just means taking off the excess vinyl. So can you see, this is coming off quite easily. So that's face, just got to take out a couple of the centers. Off. You do have to be mindful of, of, you know, what it was supposed to look like in the first place because, you know, that can happen where it tears and if you're not careful, you end up with a bit of a glitch. I and mean, this is only for me, so it wouldn't be the end of the world. And that's the alpha lips. Eyes. So there's a little bit caught in there, I think. I'm just going to go back in and look at the original because that way you see the loops that were on the on the letters. So yeah, that's that's not supposed to be there. When that happens, it does like to stick to itself. 
which can be a bit of a problem. Got to take the tiny little center of the E out there, the Y. It's really hard to see. Uh, there's a loop. There's a little loop out of there. Little loop out of the P. Just be careful because if you put on the wrong bit, it uh, can really muck it up. See, at first there, I went too deep. So that's that, and then you've got the A in face. And then we've got the middle of the A here. And it helps to look at the um, original on the computer because you can gauge, you know, whereabouts on the letter you're looking because it's say, um, quite difficult to see. I'll just get rid of that little bit of vinyl. Pop that over there. So I'm going to cut these down because they're going on separately. So... You know, this is just for me at home, so it's not, you know, crucial to be perfect. Obviously, I want it to be as good as it can be, but I'm not going to die in a ditch over it. You know, my motto, ladies, good enough is good enough. And then just this masking tape will probably be wide enough. So... Like I said before, it, it doesn't want to be too sticky, which is, is counterintuitive. But I'll just pop that over there. I mean, this is a real life demo, you know, I haven't, um, I haven't kind of done this and then gone back in and kind of redone it. I'm, you know, some of these demos have definitely not first time. But, you know, I'm not doing this professionally. This is just like a little hobby of mine. And I just thought some of you might like to see it. I don't know how many, but uh, 10 out of 10 for trying, eh, Helen? That's a bit too sticky. I probably should have. This dress obviously isn't very fluffy. The best best things to do it is on actually like a jumper. Because what's happening with this, some of this is actually pulling up the um, paper from the vinyl as well, not just the vinyl, which is a bit of a problem. because that won't stick onto the plastic. So I need to try and clear that off. And hopefully when I do this, yeah, so that's clear now, you can see um, that it's clear. I need to empty those out. I'm be really lazy and not empty them out. So I'm just gonna eyeball it and say that that's roughly the middle. Fingers crossed, because this should really work easily. I've got to finish making Hattie's cakes. I haven't got all that much time. Now, that's what I like to see. Quite straightforward. Pop the lips back in there. And then I'll go on and do 
the um, eyes. So this is mostly um, mascara and um, some eye crayons. Um, this should actually surprisingly work better having been used this, this carrier, the masking tape on this occasion, should work better for being having used once already. Really weird, isn't it? You think the stickier the better, but that's not actually true. Yeah, it's quite good. I've done it on, my mum's got wheelie bins. So, you know, I put the name of her house on the wheelie bin and um, her recycling bin and stuff. And it's, it's quite a smart way of identifying things, you know. And her house name is in a certain font. So I use that font to um, put the name on the bins. And it, you know, does look quite nice. And funny enough, People are funny, aren't they? My daughter, I, I made one for my daughter's neighbour because she admired my daughter's um, name on house name on her wheelie bin. And so I made it for her neighbour and Grace put it on her neighbour's bin and she never acknowledged it. I thought it was quite a nice thing to do. I'm gonna try and do, oh, I'm gonna have to enter it. Oh. And then again, and this is only going on my dressing table, so it's not like anyone's going to see it really. And see how nicely that has stuck. That's why doing it on plastic is just so easy. So that's that one. hopefully do the face. I'm hoping not to empty that one because that's a bit of a bit of a pain. And I'm actually finding that this works very well for storage. So um Alleluia getting there. I've still got loads and loads of tidying up to do. But um you know it's still glorious weather and I'm not sweating to death in the bedroom sorting that out because the weather won't last and housework will still be there. I think I've said this before, but um, housework definitely expands to fill the time allotted to it. And uh, it'll be there when I'm dead and gone, so I refuse to get worked up about it. So I was filming the hall, that's always tidy. <laughs> so how's that coming? Oh, isn't it marvellous? The, the one that I'm getting in a rush now to do, I need to get this done. Probably shaking the camera on every time I. When it's um, like uh, cursive writing, it is easier because the letters are joined together. So I'm going to do this one like this. Fingers crossed. Yeah, it's so easy compared to that board. I should have I should have coated the board first. It would have made it so much easier. There we are, done. And that was in real time. I mean, obviously, they could have been lined up better. They could have been straighter, and everything else. But it does the job. And I'm happy with that. So I'm quickly going to finish um, Patty's cake. And then I will show you that. Go, Coco.